Hi everyone, welcome to a new devlog. In this episode, we'll see many small changes that have made a significant update, such as improvements in combat, inventory, UI, etc. So let's get started. To start off, I have added two temporary indicators to the UI. One is the life indicator, and the other is the resistance indicator, which shows the capability to block incoming attacks. These indicators already have the basic functionality, as they are updated when health or resistance points change. The design is not finished, but having them already developed also helps me to debug, especially when I have been improving the combat system and I can see how the player takes damage in the UI. On the other hand, I have added some changes to the inventory. Now we cannot drop items we have collected and linked to a quest. I use narrative to manage my dialogues and quests, but it doesn't have native item management. So once you pick up an item for a quest, if you drop it, it's not retroactive, marking that quest as not completed. After talking to the dev in their Discord and seeing that the solution involved touching the core files with C++, I found my solution without editing the plugin code. This solution prevents you from dropping objects that have quests linked once you have picked them up. It's a straightforward solution that avoids developing more complex systems that can create more bugs in the future. On the other hand, you can now consume items such as food. My game will have no potions, but you will recover health points by consuming food and resting. There will be no food cooking system, but you will be able to pick fruits and mushrooms or buy food from vendors or in the village. I have also added a protection system, so if you have maxed out your health, you will not be able to accidentally consume food. This is very useful as it's very annoying when you waste a potion or similar by mistake in other games. Combat has been improved quite a bit. Besides adding more juice with visual and sound effects, I have improved the targeting system and the AI of the enemies. The lock on target system is hybrid. It can be activated manually, but it always activates automatically when entering combat, leaving the player the possibility to deactivate it manually if needed. Concerning the targeting system, I have changed the camera system again. Until now, I was using the advanced third camera system, which works very well, but it gave me a lot of problems controlling it as I wanted. So I have gone back to the ALS camera system. As you can see now, when you lock on target, the camera gets closer to the action and leaves an object to the right where we have a wider range of vision. As for combat, the enemies have more diversity of attacks and are more aggressive. I intend not to make a Dark Souls version, but I want the combat to be more meaningful, rewarding advanced strategies such as blocking or dodging. When we block an attack, we consume the poise or block resistance. But this can be recovered over time. If we totally consume our poise, the enemy could stun us, leaving us in a very delicate situation. That prevents the player from abusing the block and being too defensive. For the enemies, it works the same way. So we urge the player to be a little more aggressive because if we are very defensive, the enemy will also recover, making the combat even more challenging. Finally, as I explained in the previous devlog, when you hurt an enemy, it plays a heavy heart animation. These animations have a displacement and help the combat to be more dynamic. Because the enemies can block our attacks and those animations have no displacement, when they block an attack, we push the enemy a short distance in the direction of the attack. This gives the combat more dynamism. Otherwise, the characters get so close that they can overlock, which visually doesn't look good. It also helps gameplay by preventing spamming attacks. Now, the player must move, recover positions, and prepare for the next attack while the enemy has been doing the same. The combat system is not finished, but now becomes much more challenging and rewarding to defeat enemies. In my game, communication between the character player and the player behind the screen is very important. At the moment, it's very simple, but as we can see, the player warns of the things we should do or take into account to do a quest, enter an area, etc. Obviously, in a subtle way to not spoil the player or making him or her feel like a dummy. This system needs more work and design, but the basic functionality is already there. 
And that was all the progress. I'll plan to keep working on the combat and start modeling the characters to replace the ALS dummies. But this is content for a future devlog. Until then, I hope you liked today's episode. As always, thank you very much for watching and see you soon.